Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I want to show you this node I made, which is over here. It's a group node. You can see it has a bunch of stuff in it. I want to show you what it does, and I also want to explain how to make it yourself because it has a bit of math involved and it can be a bit confusing. So I'll do my best. So first of all, what does this node do? So you see it has two sliders. It has something called UV Scale and Transform, and what the Transform slider does, as you can see, it takes our mesh and converts it into its UV coordinates. It basically maps it to its UV map is another way to say that. And this is kind of like a strange thing. It doesn't have many uses, but it does show that the node editor has a lot more functionality than a lot of people think. Um, usually you don't see things with this much control and it's kind of a strange type of node, but either way uh, we can do that. And then we can also mess with our UV scale, which is the scale of the target mesh. So if we make it very big like this, our transformation will go from here to here. And if we make it something like one, you can see now we are transforming like this. So I'm going to keep it a two. And now we just want to, you know, make this ourselves and talk about why it works. And basically, this is a vector displacement tutorial, but whatever. So control N, start a new project from the beginning. This is what your blender should be looking like. And there are a couple settings we need to mess with before starting anything. And mainly that is going to the render tab, making sure we're using cycles because um, displacement and vector displacements as of today, maybe in the future will get better, need cycles. So we're going to do that. And we can also switch to GPU if you have a good GPU. And for this model, let's use not a cube, but maybe something like a, we could do a monkey or let's try a sphere. So we're going to do the same type of thing with a sphere. And now let's just go to the shading workspace, which is where we're going to do our work. Uh, since we're in cycles, go to rendered mode so we can actually see any displacement we do and also create a new material. Okay, so main thing I want to stress is that, you know, our material output has surface, volume, displacement. I don't care what you have in surface. It's irrelevant. We're just going to be messing with displacement. So this uh, principled BSDF is fine. You can also use, you know, a diffuse BSDF. It really doesn't matter. You can just use an image texture, whatever you want. Okay, so let's take this in steps. So since we are doing vector displacement, we need to be in cycles, which is handled, but we also need to make sure that um, our material is able to actually displace. And what I mean by that is we need to go to this material tab, um, settings, and then under displacement, hopefully my face isn't covering it, but uh, under displacement, you'll see bump only, switch this to displacement and bump. And so basically we just need to make sure our displacement is working. And then here's what we're going to do. So first of all, add in a texture coordinates node, and we're also going to need a geometry node. And I'm going to construct this in a way that hopefully makes a bit of sense. I'm not just going to dive right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a vector math node. This is a node that lets us do math with vectors, as you might expect. And we're going to switch this over to subtract. And you can just hit S like I did. So A is add, S is subtract, fast way to do it. And we're going to take our position and put it in the second socket. So we're taking zero as our first vector and subtracting the position. And when we plug this into the displacement, what's going to happen? It disappears. But does it disappear? What actually happens is this whole thing is converging on the origin, right? It's kind of shrinking down to zero. And the way you want to think about this is let's just get rid of this. Uh, the way you want to think about this is right now we have a sphere. All the vertices have some position, which, by the way, is stored in this position socket of the geometry node. We then take that and then subtract or add negative the position. So we take the position and subtract the position, which gives us zero. So when we plug this in, everything goes exactly to zero. But now what we can do is we can add something. So it's all at zero, but now we can send it to something. So we can add our UV which is why we need our texture coordinates node, just add your UV. Okay, so what have we done? We've um, gotten rid of the position, so everything's in the origin, and then added the UV, so it's transformed over there. But you're going to notice that this looks a bit wonky, and especially if we go to edit mode and check the UV map, it should look something like this, like a square with ja jagged uh, edges, but that's not what we get here. And the reason is it's an issue of uh, continuity and discontinuity in UV seams. So all we need to do to fix this for any model is you're just going to um, F3, yeah, F3, and then edge split. You can see I already typed it in here. Um, you might also be able to find it in the right click menu. I'm not sure. But if you're on edges, maybe it's there. Yes, edge split. So just do edge split. And now you can see we have our jagged um, looking thing. But it's also not centered, right? You can see actually the origin is on the bottom left of this, which makes sense, especially when you uh, consider our UV unwrap, which is not showing. 
there we go. Uh, you can see the origin is over here, uh, which is why everything is kind of translated, but we want the origin actually over here, and this is a minus 0.5, minus 0.5 coordinates. Um, if you consider this to be the origin, this is uh, minus 0.5 in the x, minus 0.5 in the y. So what we basically need to do is transform the origin so it's resting where we want it to. And if you didn't understand any of that, that is fine. Basically, all I'm saying is add a mapping node right here uh, between our UV and our vector math. So just add this mapping node. And then we are going to change our location, just x and y, because it's UV maps are two-dimensional. There's no z. Minus 0.5 for both of them. Make sure you don't type in anything extra. And there we go. That centers it. So that is perfect. And then we can also do the scaling thing I was talking about. So you can either do that here, which scales it. But of course, it will mess with the center of our uh, where the center of where we want this to be. If that make, I mean, we just talked about this. So hopefully it makes sense. Um, so we can either add another mapping node to fix that or in the spirit of vectors, just add another vector math node, set this one to scale to scale our vectors. And then if you see that does exactly what we wanted to keeping the center at the origin. Okay, cool. So, so far we have a node that does what we wanted to. We can put it on any mesh like a monkey is the one I showed you. So just select the material. And again, it's looking a bit wonky when we compare it to the UV map over over here. And that is, again, because we need to right click and then select edge split. And now it's looking exactly like our um, UV map. If you look at it over here, uh, we have the face, the ears, the eyes. I think that's what this is. Um, so there you go. But we also want to be able to go back and forth. So right now, the only way we can do that is by disconnecting to go from, you know, 3D and then reconnecting to go to 2D UV map, but we want a slider. And there's a lot of ways to do that, but probably the one that makes the most sense is adding a, since this is vector displacement, adding in a vector displacement node. And you may think, oh, perfect, it worked, there you go. Yes, this is the final result. Hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed the, the tutorial. Um, this is looking insane. Um, the scale works when we go to zero. It goes to our monkey, but then when we go up, you get this crazy thing, which is an effect of its own. Maybe this is a result you're interested in. We're not. Um, basically, the reason this happens is we're using tangent space over here. Don't worry about what it means. Basically, there's a lot of different ways to use vector displacement. And uh, you basically need to say what type you're interested in. We're not interested in tangent space. We are interested in either object or world space. In this case, it doesn't really matter. So, you know, do world space and then you can increase the scale. And we only want to go up to one, by the way. So between zero and one does our transformation. Uh, same for object space. The only difference is it's dependent on the origin of the object. Um, or sorry, object space considers the object world spaces for everything. Don't worry about it. Just pick either of them. Um, our object is centered at the origin, so it doesn't matter. And then we can just slide this to go from you know 3D to 2D. And then we can also mess with our scale for the output map. So that is basically that. But now we want to package this all together. And the way you do that is you just select your nodes and then hit Control G. That is for group, so Control G. And now we get this uh, group, this green uh, menu. And we just want to add some uh, parameters that we can mess with in our node, like I showed in the beginning. So take your group input. We're going to want to control the uh, scale here, which again, this scale in the vector displacement says how much of the transformation should we be doing. One is UV map, zero is 3D, and then everywhere in between is everywhere in between. And then let's also add another parameter for this scale, which is saying how big do we want our UV map to be, which is the size of our target mesh. OK, cool. So we have that set up. And we can actually maybe, yeah, let's make it a bit nicer. So hit N to get all these uh, properties. And you can see we have our two scales over here. Remember, the first scale is our transformation. So let's just call that transform. We want it only to be able to go between 0 and 1. So from min of 0 to max of 1. And we can have it have a default value of 0. And then for our other scale, we can just call this UV scale. And all this is just tidying up, you know, if you want to sell this node or whatever. You don't necessarily have to do this. Uh, we don't want our scale to be smaller than 0, let's say, and no bigger than 10. And we can have it start at a default value of 1. OK, so that's good. Let's exit out of this group. Uh, you can do that right here. So out of the node group. And then you can see we have our nice node that has a transform slider, which transforms, and a scale slider, which again controls the scale 
of our output, but not our input. So, And the nice thing about doing it like this instead of using, the way I used to do this is use a um, add-on called, I don't think I have it here. Oh yeah, animal, animate all. You can actually animate the position of the vertices. So I use that in a bit of scripting. Would not recommend it. This is a much easier solution. Works with vanilla blender, no need for add-ons. Yeah, so what I was saying is the nice thing about this is that the transformations are very smooth. So it's kind of like the chunks stay together until they get to their islands, which is very cool. And the nice thing about this is it's since it's dependent on our UV map, that means if we go to our UV map, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. Hopefully this should update live. So I'm just going to select, let's say, this whole island, or at least part of it. Yeah, you see, we can move it and it updates live. So this really gives a visual for what's going on. And by the way, let me just set this back to normal. Uh, we can do any kind of unwrap. Uh, it really doesn't matter. So if we do, let's say, we'll mark everything as a seam. So mark seam, and then let's unwrap this. So basically, you have this whole mess over here. Well, what do you expect to happen now? Transform makes this nice scattered thing. So. It works with any UV map. Um, if you have multiple UV maps, you can uh, go back to this node by clicking this. And instead of just using your UV from texture coordinates, you can use, I think it's just called the UV node. Yeah, UV map node. And it lets you select from a bunch of different UV maps. So if we add, this is really getting in the weeds here. I mean, you already know how to do it, but I just want to expand on this. Uh, UV maps, we can add another. So this can be a different map. And for this one, let's, or you know what, I'm not going to do it. I'm basically saying there's multiple UV maps, and you can choose from them here, and then feed that into this vector. So we're going to use our first UV map. So in this case, it's not going to change anything. And you can basically also add a slider or something that lets you control what map uh, you're using. But there you go. Uh, you now know how to make a node that uses vector displacement. That is the buzzword here that converts from 3D to UV map and also lets you scale. And we can also add more parameters that lets you control position and all that. Doesn't matter. I just uh, was playing around with this and eventually I'm going to make it a CG matter uh, quick tutorial. So for the people who saw that and have come back here uh, in the future, wh whatever. Uh, now you have the long form explanation of why it works. Again, we're just taking position, subtracting the position, which converges everything to zero, and then adding our UV map is the basic idea. But hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I've been default cube CG matter, whatever you want to call it. And if you uh, want to support my tutorials, the best way to do that is to donate to my Patreon. Um, it helps directly fund these tutorials and projects I make. So do consider doing that. There are perks like um, Discord, uh, project files. You get to know what tutorials I'm making before I do them. Check it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. See you.